What is going on guys, it's Jim from Locality Boss. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different, at least the angle from where I'm filming is different because I wanna show you my enclosures. Uh, because today's topic is how I set up my ball enclosures, what do I put in, what does my ball need to be happy. And I've been asked this question a lot, so today I will show you. And I brought you my beautiful Colombian 2019 female uh, with me. She's the perfect snake to show you my enclosures. So as you can see, uh, to my left and to my right, there are uh, three four-foot enclosures. Um, those are the enclosures that I use right now to raise up my subadult balls. Depending on the size of the balls or the locality, I use those enclosures for about two to three years. I'm currently working on uh, the plannings for my larger balls. Um, I'm actually gonna go and build a large um, wall with about 10 to 12 large enclosures that I will use to house my adult uh, red tail balls in. As of right now, these enclosures will perfectly fine because my balls are still relatively small. On my uh, right, I have uh, these wooden enclosures that I've built uh, that are all uh, have the, pretty much the same setup. So they have branches in them to climb. They have a shelf underneath the heating element so the balls can feel secure and lay underneath that hotspot. And then they also have a water dish and several hides um, that are made out of plastic and uh, cork bark. So relatively basic setup. Um, I'm not the guy for you know your bioactive, natural looking uh, enclosures. They look beautiful. I love to see them when I go to friends that uh, did set up their animals like this. But I uh, focus a lot on you know keeping everything clean. I want to sanitize everything. I want to be able to see when my balls poop or uh, if something's wrong. I just want to have, an, have it easier, you know, to clean everything up. So that's a really simple setup, but my balls are doing well and they're healthy. So uh, I think they have all they need. Um, what's really important is that you add water dishes that are large enough, um, not just for your animals to, uh, you know, drink and soak, but also for the humidity. Uh, I find that it's really helpful to add a larger water dish so that more water is going into the relative humidity uh, when it's heating up, um, you know, in your enclosure. So that's what I always do. Uh, I also change the water every four to five days uh, to make sure it's fresh and clean so that there's no bacteria, you know, developing in the water and so that your balls stay healthy. I would recommend at least once a week, uh, you know, change your water, give them fresh water. I also change the water that I spray uh, my enclosures with. So I have this large, um, you know, spray bottle. It has about five liters, I believe. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll spray my enclosures every other day. Um, if the animal's going into shed, I might even spray once a day uh, to keep the humidity between 65 and 80 percent, at least for the red tail balls, it's really important because they will give you shedding issues if it's not high enough. What else is there to say? Yes, so uh, starting with these uh, wooden enclosures, I heat the top one with a heat panel. This one has a panel connected that uh, starts usually during the night if it gets too cold. During the day, there's only this you know heating lamp in here that provides enough heat for the hotspot. And then this one down here has a uh, heating uh, stone or however you call them, those Elstein uh, stones, I don't really know, uh, relatively old fashion, um, but it all works. Uh, but from my experience, the heat panels are definitely the best way to go. Uh, not just do you not need a cage around it so that your animals don't get burned. They're also relatively nice looking compared to the other ones. This is like flat on top. And with these ones, you always have like this cage hanging around in your enclosure which is not too pretty but at the end of the day if you provide the right temperatures and the right humidity your animals won't really care but this just makes it easier um, to use a heat panel this is also the last wooden enclosure I built where I used the panel and ever since I'm only using heat panels uh, these enclosures right here are also heated by a heat panel um, what's really important is that whatever heating source you use, always use a thermostat. As you can see, I use these Lucky Reptile 
uh, Thermal Control Pro 2. Yes, I think that's what it's called. I have about 10 or 12 of these. Um, works well for me. Haven't had any issues with them. It's really important because if you, if you use a heating element like a lamp or you know like those heating stones or even a heat panel, if it gets too hot, it's always a danger for your animal. So you don't. So you want, definitely want to make sure you use a thermostat. But next off, I get these branches out of my park. I usually go, you know, walking or hanging outside. And then if I see a nice branch, I say, let's go. I take it home for my reptile room. Um, I also use cork a lot um, that I get from either the online shop or from a local pet shop. Whenever you use cork or any, you know, decoration really, uh, make sure you sanitize it before. If you get these, you know, plastic uh, hides and stuff, definitely make sure you sanitize them or put them under hot water before you use them. And the cork I always put in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes at um, 90 to 100 degrees Celsius. Um, I don't know if how much shit is in Fahrenheit, but um, that's what works for me. So I don't get any bugs and stuff in there. It's unnecessary or also mites and stuff. If you get something at the pet shop, you should always be careful. It doesn't really matter if you trust them or not. You never know what's going on. And they have so much, you know, different animals coming in and leaving. And then there's also customers that have uh, reptiles at home. So uh, you can't be careful enough. As a substrate, I use this Aspen bedding it's actually horse bedding it's not even reptile bedding because it's basically the same thing but it's way cheaper if you get it from like the horse section um, I use it for all of my animals I don't use anything else really except for paper towel and newspaper I really like to see if it's dirty you know and like those light substrates you can easily see any dirt you know if they poop or if they pee you can easily see that in this light a negative aspect about this is that it's getting moldy pretty easily if you keep the humidity too high. If you spray like the corners and it like runs down the corners, get those really dark spots that you gotta change uh, from time to time. But I've tried uh, several substrates such as coconut bedding, uh, bark, some like, you know, bark bedding, uh, several other beddings and this is basically the best one I found. Um, also, if your animals eat this, they can easily digest it because it's relatively small pieces and I've never had any issues with it so I use it, but there's different opinions on substrate. We could do a whole episode on substrate, but this is just what I use. Don't have to use it. If you're interested in it, look in, into it. I'll, I'll link the one that I use below it's called uh, Tiervol Zupa. I don't know if you can get that in the States, but you can definitely get that in Europe uh, in Germany for sure. Uh, so that's what I use as a substrate and uh, you know as again the water water dishes as I've mentioned before those are just you know containers from the dollar, dollar store so that's relatively cheap uh, you can put them in your um, dishwasher as well uh, so you can clean them up easily and yeah uh, other than that I uh, use these you know plastic hides kind of those are basically pots that are made for plants. I don't really know. Those are relatively cheap, about a dollar or two. I get those at the grocery shop or the dollar store. Uh, I just flip them around, cut this hole out. I burn, burn the edges down with the uh, lighter just to make sure uh, my balls don't hurt themselves or don't get injured. Um, and then you can use them perfectly well. Not the prettiest solution, but you can also put them in a dishwasher. You can clean them up easily and it will last a long time, so that's what works for me. I currently keep uh, two Suriname red tail balls in this enclosure, two North Brazilian balls in this one, and then there's another Suriname male down here. Um, the pairs I keep together, I always separate when I feed them. I get one of these, you know, feeding boxes uh, that are also just from the container store, from the dollar store, relatively cheap. Um, and I'll put the holes in them on the side so that the animals can breathe. And I just use them to feed them. I always separate them uh, to prevent injuries. I've never had any issues with my animals. If you haven't watched my video on cohabitating boss, uh, make sure to check it out. I'll link it um, on top. So uh, make sure to check that out. That's basically my reptile setup. I hope you enjoyed it. Relatively simple, but it works for me if there's anything happening. Uh, since I keep everything relatively simple, it's easy for me to clean it out and solve any issues occurring really. Uh, I have a rack on the other side, I have some more enclosures down here that are basically the same setup, just this one down here is larger. 
Uh, nothing really interesting to see there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, share the video and comment. If you have any suggestions, questions or any discussion really, make sure to let me know and I hope I see you in the next video.